Some Pharisees approached Jesus and tested him, saying, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any cause whatever? He said in reply, Have you not read that from the beginning the Creator made them male and female, and said, For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother, and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, man must not separate. They said to him, Then why did Moses command that the man give the woman a bill of divorce and dismiss her? He said to them, Because of the hardness of your hearts, Moses allowed you to divorce your wives. But from the beginning it was not so. I say to you, Whoever divorces his wife, unless the marriage is unlawful, and marries another, commits adultery. His disciples said to him, If that is the case of a man with his wife, it is better not to marry. He answered, Not all can accept this word, but only those to whom that is granted. Some are incapable of marriage because they were born so, some because they were made so by others, some because they have renounced marriage for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. Whoever can accept this ought to accept it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. What is God's intention and ideal for marriage? Jesus had to deal with this issue with the scribes and the Pharisees when they questioned Jesus, why did Moses allow divorce in the Old Testament? So what is the purpose or the intention and the ideal of marriage for God? God's intention and ideal for marriage is this, that those who enter into this union may become indissolubly one, that they are no longer two, but one flesh. This is God's intention and ideal for marriage. This ideal could be seen in the unbreakable union of Adam and Eve. They were created for each other, not for anyone else. They were the model and the pattern of those who were to come. However, in the course of time, this ideal was lost. And that is why Moses allowed divorce in the Old Testament. But that was not the case in the beginning. So Jesus quoted from the uh, book of Genesis. When God created a man, he created the male and the female. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and cling to his wife. They are no longer two, but one flesh. Then Jesus added, Therefore, no man separate what God has joined. So marriage is a divine institution. It's, it is instituted by God himself. And nobody has the authority, even the church, to separate a marriage that is uh, united in Christ. Then you may ask, when, then why um, the church grants annulment? Annulment is totally different because what the church says is this, there was no actual real marriage from the very beginning for such and such a reason. For example, a, no, a partner is forced by his or her parents to marry uh, you know, a boy or a girl against his or her will. That is coercion. That, is, that kind of marriage is invalid. Or someone has no intention, if one partner has no intention to have children, but doesn't tell 
his or her in a partner before the marriage. Only after the marriage, his or her intention is revealed that the marriage is invalid because the main purpose of marriage is procreation. You know. So if there is such a such reason, you know, the church grants an element. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. As we stand before the Lord, let us praise our needs, our prayers before him and ask for his blessing. Let us pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, all bishops, priests, religious and laity, that they may always follow Jesus, listen to his teachings faithfully, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for peace throughout the world, in our own homes, in our homeland and also in all those places torn by war and violence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us remember in a special way all those who are sick and suffering, our own loved ones in our families and members of our parish community and those who are afflicted with the coronavirus, that they may get well from their illness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us keep in silence our own intentions and also the intention of this Mass. This Mass is being offered for John B. Farrell. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, hear these prayers of your faithful people. Bless us and help us to follow you and imitate your love and goodness in our hearts. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, and the work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of his part and why may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are ye, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you fruit, the vine, and the work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink, blessed be God forever. With the humble spirit and the contrite heart, May we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight in this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, Lord, from my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God, it is right and just. It is truly right and it is our duty and our salvation, always sent everywhere to give you thanks, Father. Most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word, through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so, with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, 
Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts be praying by sending down your spirit upon them like the new fall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and he entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partake in the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Blaise Surbit, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, John B. Farrell, whom you have called from this world to yourself, grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also of our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Maximilian Kolb, and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed to hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said you are apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity, in accordance with your will, to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. May this mingling of the body and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us, receive it, and the receiving of the body and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, bring me the judgment and the condemnation, but through your loving mercy, be for the perfection of mind, the body, and the healing of the Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only so the world and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us to everlasting life. Amen. The act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Now permit me to be separated from you. Amen. The communion song. The blood that I will give you, says the Lord, is my flesh for the life of the world. Let us pray. May this holy communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended now. Let us go in peace and love to serve the Lord.
Thanks be to God. Thank you and have a wonderful weekend. For our discussion, we will sing Now Thank Be All Our God, song number 545. Five for five. Now thank be all our God, with hearts and hands and voices, who wondrous things cast down, in whom his world rejoices, who from our mother's arms has blessed us all our with countless gifts of love and still